still going to want some reciprocity. So now we got to talk about wants so not because you know what you're seeing. That's your first self-defense. Know what you're seeing. Know how to cut that off. All right? For example, if you say, well, you know what? I don't need you to take my kid to work. Well, why? What's wrong with me? Don't you trust me? No. I mean, if you really cared about me, you could take the no answer. You shouldn't be willing to do all that in the first place. I'm going to just keep it real with you. I ain't taking care of your kid on, after two dates. I'm saying, uh, you know, maybe after a month, your kid, you decide if I can come and see your kids. You decide, okay? And you and your kids decide if you like me or not. You know what I'm saying? And we progress that way. All right. Go ahead. No. dishwasher you always been wanting? I'm going to get you that. A little reward. Because all those things are material, right? But we're working on the psychological and spiritual. Wait a minute. How are we going to fix what you done? You slapped me and you slapped him. I mean, that's nice. But, you know, you're going to have issues with that. That's not going to repair that. I mean, if he comes to you and says, you know what? I'm gonna go, we're going to go get some counseling. We? You're the one that's doing the stuff. Are you going to get some counsel? Okay. Or things will be smooth. A little reward again. Things will be smooth for a week. They'll get some, some basic counseling just to satisfy you or him. I don't think we need counseling anymore. See, now we're scripting away again that, that support. Well, that counselor don't know what they're talking about anyway. Just because they got a degree. See, that's your problem. Now he does the brainwashing. That's your problem. You always look to these other people because they got degrees, this, that, and the other. They don't know about life. Okay? The counseling was just done as a little reward. You know, like to, to mollify you for a while. So, you know, make you feel better about the situation. Take it into the, you know, the aquarium or take it into the um, park or whatever, or King's Island. That's just to mollify the situation for well, he is treating better, and he's doing this, that, and the other for him. It's not as bad as he's saying. Oh, he did, he did give me that dishwasher. Oh, look at this dress he bought. See what I'm saying? The other pimps, they go, they go even a step further. They give you drugs and make you feel good. That is a conform control. All right. Because now you get dependent on the drug. Well, if you want some more of this, you need to do this in order to get that. Okay. And then, all right, if I'm feeling losing control, I give you a little reward. Okay. I give you a little bit more drugs, I give it to the other person. So now that we recognize that, there are other ways to come back. Some people have been in situations, they need to know how to get out of the situation. So first of all, to get out of the situation, you have to realize first, first of all, that you can get out of the situation. You are not trapped. Okay. The other thing is you don't have to directly fight the person that you're dealing with. Okay. You have to deal with you and with your child. The way you're going to really realize if you really got a situation is, is a key word. No. A pimp, they use a boyfriend, a cult, the organizations, the traffickers, they can't take that word. No. When I uh, worked in uh, Children's Hospital Psychiatric Division and we used to work with kids who were autistic and everything, we could tell the parents who didn't have as 
too much discipline with their child because they want to give their child everything because of their mental uh, disability, right? Because all we had to do is say one time is no to the child. And that child would freak out. And the parents didn't know what to do, okay? Because some children would actually slap themselves or hurt themselves to get attention, to get what they want. You think like, well, you mean they didn't throw stuff? In they, they threw a tantrum, but they weren't hurting or breaking other things. They were hurting themselves to get what they want. Oh, don't worry, baby. I'll never tell you no again. Next thing you know, the kid is eating whatever he wants, eating whatever he wants. Now you've you got a weight problem on top of this psychological issue, the psychiatric issue that we're working on. And we literally had to teach the parents how to say no without being abusive. And we had to teach the kids to accept no without abusing himself. Okay? All right. Well, you ain't got to teach the pimp or the abusive boyfriend or the organization or whatever. You ain't got to teach them how to take no. But you do have to stand up and say no. And the sooner you say no, the sooner you have that conflict, if you deal with it at the small end, you don't have to deal with it at the big end. But you can't deal it at any and all levels. Okay. For a lot of people, it's just simply saying, you know what? I don't need this code. It's been a while since I've been independent, but I can get my independence back. Just leave. Okay? And you can leave what we call by degree. What I mean when I say leave by degrees, okay? Uh, you keep your money, you don't give all your money up to them. You know, as you start saving, you get a separate account that they don't know about. You know what? All right, I'm getting ready to go to lunch on my break. And then on your break, don't go to lunch. Go stock your money away. Same thing with the abusive boyfriend, right? He's been controlling you, controlling the clothing and the finances and everything. All right? He won't even let you work anymore. But you might have talents that people will pay you for. Okay? You might have been a good typist. When he's not around, have people come to the house and type. So I'm not a type. They charge you, you charge him five, ten, twenty bucks. Y'all studying karate right now. Okay. You know, hey, I'm just gonna go to the Y. You say I gotta get my body in shape. And instead of go, just going to the Y and exercise, you come in here. You learn how to fight. They don't tell them that. Make a phone call to one of your girlfriends that used to support you and say, honey, I'm in this relationship. I don't know how to get out. If something goes down, can you come and get me? Or can you come and get my kids? Okay. Start building your, your, building your support system back up. Quiet. Okay. So that when it comes to time for the big no, it's going to be on. Sometimes the big no can simply be, all right, go. He comes back and everything is gone. They ain't got to know where you went, who you went with. And you tell the people who are helping you, this is who he is, this is what I don't want. Go to the police, get your restraining order. What you have to do is psychologically. You have to build up your mentality back up. Okay? In cults and so forth, I teach people this. Read outside of the dogma. And what I mean when I say read outside of the dogma, Certain organizations and cults, they control what you read. You only can read what we write and what we print. Seriously. All right? And then you find that what they write about and print is so left of the field, and you read something about that same subject or whatever, you find out something different, and you can begin to do the comparison and the contrast yourself. Listen to the words I say, comparison. In contrast, a lot of people use the word comparison so the wrong way. Well, she's a whole different person in comparison to that person. It's a whole different person in contrast to that person. Everybody stand up, class. Face back to Haru, come to attention. Onye. Onye, I'm going to shim the car. Stop on them. Reading outside the box, okay? 
So just like when I tell you guys it's okay to go to other martial arts class and see what they're doing, it's not for the comparison, it's for the contrast. Because for, for us the challenge is how much we know versus how much they know. Okay. And usually, go ahead. Contrast, I, I missed that part. Contrast is actually finding the difference. Comparison is finding the similarity. And so when people say, oh, in comparison, this, that, and the other, and they're talk, really talking about difference. The difference, therefore, is contrast. That's all, and that's just my that piece about how we the language. So read outside the box. Don't let anybody cut off your sources of information. When they become the only source of information, again, that goes back to the making you dependent and taking control. How can you know this is right or wrong if you don't know if there's another way? Right. Yeah. It sounds like it makes common sense. Right. But you believe you believe me, you'll find out. It's very subtle. Okay. Oh well, we've done the research on all this already. That's why we can tell you you should be only reading our stuff. Okay. And then they're telling you stuff about other things that is this way and it's that way, but then when you actually read about the other stuff that they're talking about, you find the contrast of what they're saying. And now you can contrast. You can tell the difference up here. You see what I'm saying? You take note of that. How, how far are they going with this? I got control of this thing. How far are they going with um, telling you stuff? How absurd is it? <coughs> All right. Um, I'll give you an example again. Um, a lot of people are into Islam, but then some people are into the nation of Islam. Okay. Um, and so the nation of Islam teaches from the Christian Bible. They say we do that because black people only understand Christianity. How do you know you only understand Christianity if you never read the Quran? They got Quranic translations like everybody else, just like they translate Christianity. I mean, Christianity was written in Aramaic originally. Right? And then you got new individual standards. Okay. Well, it can be translated. So why can't everybody read the Quran? But dogma says, just read my stuff. Okay? Now, I'm not putting down the Nation of Islam, because actually the Nation of Islam has done some great stuff for some people. But you can't get stuck in dogma where the only thing you read is just the final call and you don't read another newspaper. Or well, the only thing you read is message to the black man then you don't read Naeem Akbar, okay? Or you don't read, you know, um, Dr. Cornell West, okay? And then compare and contrast, okay? But if now if you still decide to be there, whose choice is that now? It's your choice. See what I'm saying? Not theirs. It's your control. And if you feel you need to leave it, well, you can say, based on this is why I'm leaving. No. You have something to fight back with. Because okay? when you feel you don't know, and you feel that they know more than you know, just like with a child, a parent becomes close to a guy, that person in that pimp situation becomes like what? Becomes like God. Okay? The God complex. That abusive boyfriend becomes like what? Becomes like God. That organization that took that person out of the country over here in the United States, they become like God. And they really get nasty with it because they get them visas and passports, they bring them over here to this country, but the person is not allowed to hold on to their passport. They keep the passport, they keep the visas, they keep the social security numbers, they even keep the birth certificate. Okay? You go out there, you look now you look like an illegal immigrant. And they'll tell you, you I keep your papers to keep you safe. You go out there and you get caught, they're going to deport you. And because they don't know nothing about this country, they even tell them, they'll torture you first. Wait a minute, when we was back over there, didn't he tell them the land of the free and this, that, and the other? Well, you don't know how this country works. I do. Let me do that for you. I can take care of you. See what I'm saying? And so now, that person no longer has a support system. 